Mackinac Island at the crossroads of the Upper Great Lakes has a long and rich history. This summer gathering place attracted Native Americans and missionaries, fur traders and fishermen, soldiers and summer tourists. Their experiences weave together to create a fascinating fabric of history that is the heritage of Mackinac. Mackinac Island first appeared about 12,000 years ago as the last glacier retreated north of the Straits of Mackinac. The glacier cut the Earth's surface and deposited meltwater to form the Great Lakes. Over the next 10,000 years, the lake levels dramatically rose and fell, sculpting the island's steep cliffs and unusual limestone formations. Indigenous peoples summered on Mackinac Island more than a thousand years ago. They named the island Michela Mackinac and journeyed here every summer to fish for whitefish and lake trout. Jesuit priests Claude de Blon and Jacques Marquette established a mission to Huron Indians on Mackinac Island in 1670. The following year, Father Marquette moved the mission to the mainland on the north side of the Straits. There, French merchants established a summer fur trading village and French soldiers constructed Fort de Bois. For the next 150 years, furs were the business of the region and Mackinac was the most important summer depot and transshipment center. In 1715, the French built Fort Michel Mackinac, a palisaded village on the south side of the Straits, to replace Fort de Bois. Michel Mackinac remained a French outpost until 1760, when British victories in the Seven Years' War transformed New France into British Canada. British soldiers and fur traders came to the Straits of Mackinac in 1761. Twenty years later, during the American Revolution, the British dismantled Michela Mackinac and moved the entire community to Mackinac Island. Rebel victories in the Illinois country, threats from the Spanish across the Mississippi, and Michela Mackinac's poor condition convinced Lieutenant Governor Patrick Sinclair to relocate his fort to the more defensible cliffs of Mackinac Island. The civilian community, excluded from the new fort, established their village around the bay below. Mackinac Island became part of the new United States in 1783, but the British remained in control of the region for another 13 years. On September 1, 1796, the first American troops marched into Fort Mackinac. Departing British soldiers, eager to maintain a presence in the region, moved 40 miles east to St. Joseph's Island, just inside Canadian waters, where they built Fort St. Joseph. War broke out between the United States and Great Britain once again in 1812. Word of the conflict reached the British first at Fort St. Joseph. On the night of July 16th, Captain Charles Roberts sailed from Fort St. Joseph with 40 British soldiers and 500 French Canadian and Native American allies. Under the cover of darkness, they landed on the north shore of Mackinac Island, dragged their cannon to the high ground behind the fort, took positions in the woods, and prepared to attack. Unaware of the outbreak of hostilities, American soldiers were completely surprised by the British invasion. American commander Lieutenant Porter Hanks assembled his soldiers for battle, but soon realized he was hopelessly outnumbered, dominated by the British cannon and unable to protect the civilian community. The first engagement of the War of 1812 was soon over as Lieutenant Hanks surrendered Fort Mackinac without resistance. Two years later, as the war raged on, American troops tried to recapture Fort Mackinac. American soldiers landed on the north side of the island and advanced inland. British Commandant Lieutenant Colonel Robert McDowell marched his troops from the fort, positioned his native allies, and ambushed the invaders in a bloody skirmish. The battle left 13 Americans dead, including second-in-command Major Andrew Holmes. Following the battle, two American ships successfully blocked food shipments and supplies from reaching the island. 
In desperation, McDowell's soldiers stormed and captured both vessels. Food shipments to the island resumed and the captured American ships became valuable British war prizes. By December 1814, the war was over. American peace negotiators accomplished what their troops failed to do, as the Treaty of Ghent restored the captured lands of the Upper Great Lakes to the United States. When peace returned to Mackinac, the fur trade remained the dominant industry. John Jacob Astor located the headquarters of the northern department of his American Fur Company on Mackinac Island. The company established winter trading camps along rivers extending from the Great Lakes into Illinois, Michigan, Wisconsin, and Minnesota. Every summer, traders in canoes loaded with furs returned to Mackinac Island from their winter camps. Here, on the island's Market Street, the furs were counted, sorted, and bailed for shipment to the East Coast and Europe. Millions of dollars worth of furs passed through Mackinac Island in the 1820s. Island life teemed with activity as voyagers, clerks, merchants, and native people gathered to purchase supplies, conduct business, and enjoy the summer rendezvous. The great influx of indigenous families to Mackinac Island every summer provided an opportunity for Christian missionary efforts. In 1823, Reverend William Ferry established a Protestant mission on the island, and by 1830, the Presbyterian congregation built the mission church. In the late 1830s, the fur trade declined. As Michigan grew into statehood in 1837, the population and prosperity of Mackinac Island waned. Fishing became Mackinac Island's primary summer industry, Fishermen from the nearby ports brought their catch to the island in sturdy Mackinac boats. Coopers kept busy making barrels for shipping fish to Chicago and Detroit. Following the Civil War, tourism became the dominant industry on Mackinac Island. Crowds of summer tourists enjoyed the island's historic charm, natural beauty, and healthy environment. In response to the island's growing popularity, the federal government created Mackinac National Park in 1875. This was America's second national park, established just three years after Yellowstone. The Commandant of Fort Mackinac became the park superintendent, and a second company of soldiers joined the garrison to help maintain the park. Tourists thronged to the island on board elegant steamboats and swift-moving trains. Travelers from throughout the Midwest could easily ride to the Straits of Mackinac within a day or two. The village of Mackinac Island welcomed vacationing visitors with curio shops, restaurants, and hotels. Island merchants stocked birch bark baskets, cattail reed mats, and corn husk dolls made by local Odawa and Ojibwe people. In 1889, Henry Murdoch opened the island's first candy kitchen, offering sweet treats such as hand-dipped chocolates, saltwater taffy, and creamy fudge. By the 1920s, fudge became Mackinac Island's number one sweet souvenir. The fudge industry thrives today with more than a dozen shops catering to sweet-toothed visitors. The Mission House, Lakeview, and Island House were among the island's earliest hotels. In 1887, the Grand Hotel opened its doors and established Mackinac Island as the most fashionable summer resort in the Great Lakes. Affluent Midwesterners constructed palatial summer homes in keeping with new standards set by the Grand Hotel. In 1895, after 115 years of service, the United States Army removed the soldiers from Fort Mackinac. The federal government transferred the fort and national park to the state, creating Michigan's first state park. The Mackinac Island State Park Commission was also created to oversee and maintain the park's historic and natural wonders. Just three years later, the first automobile appeared on Mackinac Island. The noisy contraption threatened the island's carriage tour economy. After receiving a petition from the tour drivers, the village council quickly banned horseless carriages. This simple but decisive act was instrumental in preserving Mackinac Island's late 19th century atmosphere. 
Mackinac Island businesses flourished in the early 1900s until the Great Depression dealt a crushing blow to tourism. Financial hard times made summer vacations an unaffordable luxury. Businesses closed and summer cottages were abandoned. The island's economic woes continued through World War II as gas and tire rationing kept tourists at home. Mackinac Island once again became a popular and busy summer resort after the war. People had jobs, the economy prospered, and an expanded highway system brought vacation-bound travelers to northern Michigan. In 1958, the Mackinac Island State Park Commission began the restoration of Fort Mackinac. The reconstruction of Colonial Michelin Mackinac in Mackinac City began the following year. Today, the Commission's family of historic sites and museums also includes historic Mill Creek Discovery Park and the old Mackinac Point Lighthouse in Mackinac City, as well as the Richard and Jane Manoogian Mackinac Art Museum on Mackinac Island. The Commission preserves and presents the natural wonders and history of the Straits region for hundreds of thousands of visitors each year. The growing popularity of Mackinac Island has created development pressures which threaten the island's historic character. In response to these concerns, the Commission is working to secure scenic easements and other protections for undeveloped land. The preservation and interpretation of Mackinac State Historic Parks is funded through admission fees and the generosity of Mackinac Associates. We thank you for your support and encourage you to join with us in experiencing the heritage of Mackinac. This program is made possible by Mackinac Associates, friends preserving and sharing Mackinac's heritage. Inquire about becoming a member or making a donation today. Fort Mackinac is owned and operated by the Mackinac Island State Park Commission, protecting, preserving, and presenting Mackinac's historic and natural treasures since 1895. Welcome to Fort Mackinac. As you explore the site, you are walking in the footsteps of soldiers, summer tourists, and others who lived and worked on Mackinac Island for hundreds of years. Historical interpreters are stationed throughout the site to perform demonstrations and lead tours. They are happy to answer your questions, so don't be afraid to ask. Demonstrations and tours occur throughout the day. Consult your site map for times and locations. Restrooms and drinking fountains are located in the barracks, number seven on your site map. Be sure to visit Mackinac, an island famous in these regions, our premier historical exhibit. It is located on the second floor of the barracks, number seven on your site map. Fort Mackinac is entirely smoke free. Thank you for not smoking. The tea room offers food and refreshments throughout the day. Located on the terrace of the officer's stone quarters, number 14 on your site map. A food cart, adjacent to the parade ground, serves hot dogs and snacks. Support for many programs and exhibits at Fort Mackinac is provided by Mackinac Associates. Inquire at the admissions area for information about making a donation or becoming a member. The Sutler's Museum Store is located on the ground floor of the barracks, number 7 on your site map. Original books published by Mackinac State Historic Parks are the most rewarding souvenirs of your visit. Don't forget to visit our other historic sites in downtown Mackinac Island. Your Fort Mackinac ticket includes admission to the Mackinac Art Museum, the Mackinac Island Native American Museum at the Biddle House, and other sites. <laughs>